A backup plan may be quietly emerging when it comes to President Biden in 2024. Democrats may not want to say it publicly, but there seems to be a whole lot of soul searching going on within the party privately. As New York Magazine explains, Democrats may feel gratitude to Biden for vanquishing Trump and love some of his work as president, and at the same time, they say, retain an intense feeling of unease about a visibly aging 79-year-old whose GOP opponents are only growing more extremists. John, the opening to this New York Magazine piece really caught my attention. I thought it was worded so cleverly. Um, let me read it to you. On a Tuesday evening in April, nearly half a century, <laughs> half a century after Joe Biden first publicly mused about running for president, an unsettled cross-section of the Democratic establishment assembled at Pinehurst, a golf resort in North Carolina. At the cocktail reception on the lawn, conversation shifted from grim, the midterms, to grimmer, the state of the party's planning for 2024 when Biden will stand for re-election on the eve of his 82nd birthday. Seems the Democrat establishment kind of recognizes what the world does, that he might not have it all together um, at his age. See, look, one of the greatest strokes of, of genius, or probably with this guy, luck, uh, is that he actually picked for a vice president someone who the Americans like less than him. Um, <laughs> That's the greatest joke of job security, or else he'd have probably been jettisoned already. Look, all this talk about backup plans, wow. is this how they're governing? Is, is this really how they're governing based upon the midterms and who's going to win? Yeah. Govern now. They have mm -hmm. the presidency. Mm -hmm. They have the Senate. They have the House. And if they govern for what the people wanted right now, rather than what their agenda says that they think we want, then they might be in a better position. Right now, they know that Joe Biden was only elected to beat Donald Trump and to overturn his agenda. And what do we have now? We have a border crisis. What do we have now? We have an energy crisis. What do we have now? We have international crisis because of being botched Afghanistan withdrawal, uh, Ukraine, and now a botched statement on, on China about Taiwan? This guy is a hot mess. And right now, we need more leaders who are talking about the things that people want, parental rights and talking about school choice. Securing our borders, making sure that we have a manufacturing and energy independence. Because I'll tell you what, I run a logistics company and I have tractors. My energy costs have gone up 100 percent, doubled since this Ooh. time last year, doubled since the, uh, the Trump administration. Wow. And, and these are things that will help us because I guarantee you the same things that my tractors run on are the same thing that farmers are running their tractors on. Wait, because this Biden agenda is going to make things more scarce on the shelves, is going to make things more expensive at the pump, and Democrats need to focus on actually running the country and not on winning elections every single time. Yeah, practical words of wisdom there. One thing I find really curious, I've always thought that President Biden's running. Um, why? Because he told us so. Watch this soundbite. Yes, my plan is to run for re-election. That's my expectation. Do you plan to run for re-election? Yes. But look, I'm a great respecter of fate. Fate has intervened in my life many, many times. If I'm in the health I'm in now, if I'm in good health, then, in fact, I would run again. Hmm. Harris, there's this line that people ask me, this is a former aide, with some regularity, when is Biden going to come out and say what he's going to do about running? An exasperated longtime Biden advisor told me recently, and I say, well, he has. I mean, he's told us more than anyone he's running, but yet his own party yeah. doesn't seem to believe him. I do want to give him credit, though. He was really honest right there. He was very transparent. Because he knows 12 days after November 8th, he turns 80. He'll be an octogenarian. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can talk about what happens in 2024, but that's a long ways away when you have the crises that we have right now. He was very honest when he said, if I have the health, then. But we're more concerned, as John James just said, about what's going on now. I can't imagine a worse situation. But then again, from what you read from that article, Kaylee, I couldn't imagine that last April, Biden's disapproval rating w sat at 56% this past April. I wouldn't have imagined that either. I, I had to look down to make sure it said it right. Like, I, I couldn't have imagined that either. So he's very transparent when he says, yeah, he's running if he can do it. But as John pointed out, who's the backup plan? Who's plan B, Kaylee? I, I don't know. I, I, maybe Pete Buttigieg, Mayor Pete, as Kennedy likes to call him, Booty Judge. <laughs> hey, boot edge edge, as Trump says. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Um, but anyway, I, I just want to know what's going to happen between now and the first election day, which is in November.
because we're going to be hurting going into the, the biggest driving season of the year. What is that going to look like? What will he do? Yeah, he says fate may intervene in his decision, Kennedy. Well, fate could be any number of things. It could be inflation. It could be gas prices. It could be empty shelves where baby formula is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It could be the American people. Wall Street Journal, only 29% say President Biden is going to run. That's 29% of, of the entire <coughs> American public of likely voters. That's a very small number. Yeah, Democrats don't want him to run again, and that's why you're hearing this panic from their hoity-toity establishment gatherings. Uh, so y you have to ask yourself, and, and this is really all Republicans have to say, is, is your life better now than it was four years ago? Is your life better now at this point in President Biden's presidency than it was during President Trump's presidency? And uh, an overwhelming number of people will go, you know what? I, there were things about President Trump that I really didn't like. However, I like that the stock market was higher. I like that interest rates were lower. I like that gas prices and food prices were lower. I like that I could go to the grocery store and get a bunch of stuff for my family without having a panic attack. I like all of those things. I like the thought of being able to hire more people for my business. And that's all you have to do. And stop touting accomplishments that are theoretical at best and a flat-out lie at worst. Yeah, the guessing game of who the backup is, Emily. I mean, we talked about Pete Boot, Edge Edge, and Kamala. Um, Gavin Newsom, who has been touted as a potential candidate himself, he has some thoughts. Watch. Ah, we don't have the sound, but here you go. On Thursday, Newsom said he and Harris have supported each other in their political careers and that he intends to continue doing so. Emily, here's the line. I'm hopeful that she's the next president of the United States, Newsom said, who has been touted as a candidate himself. I don't know if it's posturing or what, uh, but interesting quote hmm. there. Yeah, well, here's what viewers need to understand about that. So Newsom and Kamala share the same donors. They've grown up together in that political climate in California, so they will always support each other publicly. He was lieutenant governor when she was AG. He was mayor while she was district attorney of San Francisco. Those two are sort of wedded professionally. But here's why Kamala is such a big problem for the Democrat Party, right? We know that voters don't like her. We know that polling reflects her abysmal performance as vice president, right? Her approval rating is 15 points below where Biden stood at this stage in Obama's first term and 11 points behind Mike Pence under Trump. But the reality is most people think that if Biden were to endorse her, that she would secure the nomination. And it's unlikely that he would he would endorse anyone else, right? But every time polling shows that Trump beats her. Just last week, Harvard released a latest poll that showed her nine points behind Trump. So it seems sort of inevit inevitable that she's the backup plan, but it also seems inevitable that she's a really terrible choice. And that might be why everyone's pushing for Biden to stay alive. Proverbially. Yeah. P no plans. Thank you. Solve. Yeah, there we go. Politically, no plans to solve inflation, and, and they don't have a backup plan electorally. But as John James said, get back to the issues. Maybe right. that'll help a little. Yeah.